The 29th of May, 1953, became memorable date in the world of mountaineering, with New Zealand mountaineer and explorer Sir Edmund Hillary and Tibetan Sherpa, Tenzing Norgay stepping on top of Mount Everest. Edmund didn't shy away to praise his Sherpa Tenzing. He said, I have never regarded myself as a hero, but Tenzing undoubtedly was. The Himalayan mountains have long been home to indigenous groups living in the valleys. The most famous of these are the Sherpa people. The word Sherpa is often used to mean mountain guide, though it actually refers to an ethnic group. Sherpas are renowned in the international climbing and mountaineering community for their hardiness, expertise, and experience at very high altitudes. Most climbs of Everest would be impossible without the Sherpa's logistical help and knowledge. Today I will tell you about one of the heartwarming and bravest story of Sherpa who selflessly brought back one of the climbers from the death zone of Everest on his back. So it all started on the 18th of May, 2023. It was a usual day for Sherpa Gelya, who started his journey to Mount Everest with his Chinese client. When they reached Everest's death zone, Gelya couldn't ignore, but spotted that there was one climber who needed rescue, and surprisingly no one was helping him. As the name says, the area is called death zone, because here temperatures can dip minus 30 degrees Celsius or lower. Here at this point and above it, the pressure of oxygen is insufficient to sustain human life for an extended time span. This point is generally tagged as 8,000 M. The 36-year-old Sherpa says in his Instagram post that he saw the climber shaking and clinging to a rope, a man who needed rescuing and no one else was helping. This was Malaysian climber hanging on fine rope between life and death. So usually how it works that one, Sherpa takes one client and guide them to summit and bring them down together. But now Gelya was with his client halfway, but he decided and choose to save a life. This is embedded in mountaineering ethics. Saving life precedes everything. You can come back again and climb, but if a life is lost, it will never come back again. But not everyone follow this. Gelya pulled this climber 600 meters down from the balcony area to the South Colonel. In mountaineering language, a coal is the lowest point on a mountain ridge between two peaks. You can call it a gap. At one point, another guide named Nima Tahi Sherpa joined the rescue, which took about six hours. We wrapped the climber in a sleeping mat dragged him on the snow, or carried him in turns on our backs to Camp 3, Gelya said. A helicopter using a long line then lifted him from the 7, 162-meter high Camp the Thur down to base camp. Within days of his rescue, the climber appeared on several TV channels talking about his life-changing experience, but curiously failing to mention the name of his heroic savior an act that did not go unnoticed by the mountaineering community breathlessly following the story. It came as a big shock to everyone. It escalated further when the Malaysian climber, identified as Ravichandran Tharumalingam, appeared to block Gelja Sherpa on social media, astounding several people in the community who accused him of erasing the Sherpa's act of courage. Gelja, who calls himself a mountain tiger and a fighter, says he convinced his Chinese client to cancel their own expedition so he could help the Malaysian climber down to safety. He carried him on his back down from the death zone, the highest part of Everest at an altitude above 26,247 feet, where atmospheric oxygen is so low that cells in the human body die in the absence of any supplementary oxygen. On his Instagram account, the Sherpa wrote that the climber would have died up there alone without his help, adding, I carried him myself all the way down. The Nepalese authorities have led the mountaineering community in hailing Gelja's very rare death zone rescue mission. It is almost impossible to rescue climbers at that altitude. Bigyang Koirala, an official from the Nepal Department of Tourism, told of Gelja's heroic actions. It is a very rare operation. Yet bizarrely, there is one person who appears not so impressed with Gelja's feet. Ravichandran himself. The climber has received a backlash online amid suggestions that he failed to sufficiently credit Gelya for saving his life and instead blocked him on Instagram. When asked Ravichandran about Gelya's role in his rescue, 
This coming from the 58-year-old Malaysian, who is a veteran mountaineer himself, shocked many. Ravachandran lost eight fingers to frostbite during his Everest expedition in 2007. He told Channel News Asia last year after his third summit and first after his disfiguration, I was so desperate to prove a point. I was pushing myself too much that I ignored the pain in my fingers. He said he wanted to conquer old demons. In one Instagram post, Ravishandran wrote, I am alive today because I had the best and dedicated partners, the 14th Peaks Expedition Co. and Global Rescue Inc. This narrative contrasts with what Gelia maintained from the start. No one was helping him, no friends, no oxygen, no Sherpas with him, no guides, so this is quite dangerous for him. You are alive today because a Sherpa and his friend took you down to safety and it was documented for everyone to see. Acknowledge that, commented Instagram user on the climber's post. Users also speculated about why the climber did not acknowledge Gelia. I can't even wrap my head around why, asked people on social media. Why would you thank the expedition company you climbed with, but not the individual that saved your life? In his Instagram post about the rescue, Gelia noted, saving one life is more important than praying at the monastery. He told the media that the rescue on the 18th of May was massively difficult. Gelia, who grew up near Everest in a small village, started out as a porter, which he says is a relentless job with small pay. He has also worked as a Kumbu Icefall doctor, possibly the most dangerous job known to man, and has carried out more than 55 rescues till date. But he said the 18th of May rescue of the Malaysian climber was the hardest in my life. Gelia shares criticism of Ravachandran. The bizarre Everest saga took a turn when Ravachandran, seemingly facing pressure from the mountaineering community for his social media activity, reportedly unblocked Gelia. In an unusually lengthy post, Ravachandran finally acknowledged Gelia, while also maintaining in the comments that he had thanked the Sherpa two weeks ago. Sherpas are people who are so committed and dedicated to their clients, especially coming from 14 Peaks Expedition Co. and AMP, the Seven Summit Expedition Company. They never leave you behind. I experienced it this year. When descending the summit, I had difficulty. Tashi heard that I was in trouble, so he organized the rescue team, Mingma Tendi, Gelje Sherpa, Nima Dorchi, Nima Tashi, Dawa, and Deepin Bote. They are high-altitude Sherpas who make lots of sacrifices for their clients. They brought me to 7,300 meters for heli pickup for a quick heli flight to the hospital, Ravi Chandran continued. Thank you. I hope you are recovering well, responded Gelia in the comments. Gelia was applauded on social media for the tremendous grace of his response. Other commentators apologized to Gelia. Thank you for your kindness. We are truly sorry for his ignorant attitude, said one comment. We all can see that there is a discrepancy between Ravachandran's post and Gelja's accounts to the media. This whole situation was definitely very confusing and heartbeaking, as gratitude is the key to human relationships. How can you not show a gratitude to a person who saved your life? Anyways, Gelja has now left Nepal for Alaska, where he is attempting to scale Mount Denali, aka McKinley, the highest peak in North America. But his heroic act will never be forgotten. Mount Everest's climbing industry has become controversial. As the popularity of the climb has increased, there have been more traffic jams as climbers spend too much time in the death zone waiting for their chance to go to the summit. With more people has also come more pollution up near the summit. Additionally, the Sherpa people have been exploited by climbers, and their traditional way of life has been disrupted by foreign climbers. Sherpa guides are faced with some of the highest death rates of any field of employment for comparatively little pay. What is your opinion, guys?